Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the first day of Ad Summit Filipinas 2018. The biggest gathering of marketing and advertising professionals in the country. This year, we're asking, what makes a successful campaign beyond just profit? What if ROI could be redefined to mean a return on insight, a return on intelligence, or a return on impact? What if your brand's success means social good, brand love, or behavioral change? For the next three days, you'll be learning from the best in the industry. You'll learn how to DIY your ROI. And now, let's hear from our host city, the Subic Bay Metropolitan Authority Chairperson and Administrator, Attorney Wilma Esma. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Subic. Uh, first and foremost, of course, I'd like to thank the organizers for bringing the Ad Summit again here in Subic, my hometown. You've been here for the last three years. I hope you'll keep coming back for more. I saw there's an ad, I saw there's like a survey. How dare you not vote for Subic? So better vote again, and again, and again. Or I'll bring in my 3,000 people to vote for you to come back to Subic. I will dispense with the usual, Kumusta kila Norman, kila Bong? And I'd like to go back to the jugular, because after all, this is a welcome remarks. So, every time I say a welcome remarks here in Subic, I would like to always bring back the audience to what Subic is all about. Subic is all about our past. As you know, we were a Subic, we were a former military base, base in the, uh, first in the Spanish, and then second with the Americans. And then, in 1992, the Philippine government decided we have enough of the Americans. Ako po, taga-ulonga po po ako. Dito po ako lumaki. Um, dito po ako nag -aral. So you can imagine, back in 1992, when I was a little girl, or I wish I was still a little girl, the Philippine government decided, we're taking away your jobs. Kasi po dito sa Subic, wala na, there's no other source of income. Wala po kami, we don't have farms, we don't have um, fishering, fisheries, we don't have factories, we don't have advertisers. So all our sources of income has always been the U.S. Naval Base. And suddenly, our parents were advised, the national government said, sorry, no more. With no plans. Walang offer. Walang nagsabi na, sige, alis ang Amerikano, pero gagawin namin kayong puro factory. Nobody said that. There was nothing. So can you imagine that hollow in your stomach? Remember that. You know, that feeling in your stomach when you're so afraid. So one day, my parents woke up. They don't have a job anymore. And how can they send four children to school? How can they feed four children to school? And how about the rest of the people of Olongapo, Bataan, and Sambales? Mawawalan ka ng trabaho. And then, of course, I'm sorry, but always I get emotional every time I talk about this. Six months later, Mount Pinatubo erupted. And Mount Pinatubo erupted around 12 o'clock. So supposedly, supposedly it's the height of their day when the sun is up. But when Mount Pinatubo erupted in the middle of a storm, if you put your arms or your hand in front of your face, you can't even see it. That's how bad it was. And it just came down on us wet ash up on our roofs. It's like snow, but so much heavier and hot with thousands and hundreds of earthquakes happening each and every time, every minute, every second. And this is not even an exaggeration. And then when we woke up the following day, we were buried literally in several meters of ash, buried. My house, myself, it the roofs of our house, the roof of our house actually went down because it couldn't carry the weight anymore. So you can imagine the kind of feeling, desperation, 
that the community had at that time. There's no American bases, there's no jobs, and suddenly, everything is a wasteland. I always want to tell this story so you know and you value what Subic is, and you value and you understand where we are all coming from. When that happened, we did not ask for the national government to help us. We couldn't wait. We could not wait, and we should not wait. So what happened? Thousands and thousands of people answered the call, a clarion call for volunteers. Napakarami pong tao, libo-libo, came forward to clean the streets, to cut the grass, to clean the houses. Because if we do not help ourselves, who will? Naniniwala po kami nun na kailakayan namin ibangon ang sarili namin. And this was done through the passage of a law which created the former naval base as a, as a free port, which is what we call the Subic Bay Free Port. We did all this only with a dream. With a dream that if we become a free port, jobs will come, investors will come. And look at where we are now today. Ito po ang pundasyon ng Subic Bay Freeport. The foundation of Subic is the heroes that saved us at that time. Hindi naman po sa nagmamalaki, kasali po ako doon. Kaya po, when I, when, when I was asked to come back, I did not hesitate. Because I felt that I owe it to this community to come back and follow whatever dream that we had when we first started Subic 25 years ago. Subic would be nothing without the heroes who gave themselves when there's nothing else to give. This is our own do-it-yourself. This is our own DIY. Ang pakiusap, my call for you now, and I do thank you, all 4,000 of you here in Subic, bringing in money, bringing in all the economic activity. Each time you ride a cab, each time you buy a pizza, it's economic activity for my people, para sa mga kababayan ko, para sa mga stakeholders ko. But I ask you, the same do it yourself that we did 25 years ago. Nakikiusap po ako sa inyo. Magmalasakit po tayo sa Subic. Malasakit is the core value that we would like to instill here in Subic. We all know that when you come to Subic, the streets are clean. Why? Because we care. For those who doesn't speak the vernacular, malasakit is, I can't even find an English word for it. Malasakit is that when you care for somebody that it hurts, when you care for something, it's like caring for your child, but more. I ask for a clarion call, not for volunteers now, but I ask for a clarion call for malasakit for Subic. Because at the end of the day, what sets us apart from Baguio? Like ngayon, nagbobotohan kayo, hurt ako. Kanina 30% ng Baguio, 20% pa lang ang Subic. Hurt! Hurt ang lola nyo. Look, I do not want to belittle Baguio. I love Baguio City. I grew up in Baguio during my summers. But, you know, what sets Subic apart? Subic is apart and stands out because of its people. The heroes of Subic and the people who continues to serve Subic with malasakit. Bakit kami popular? Bakit kami sikat? Walang basura. Kung may basura, pick it up. Sumunod sa traffic rules. Di ba? Paglabas nyo sa gate, kanya-kanya na kayo. But how come in Subic you follow the traffic rules? And I insist that you follow the traffic rules. Huwag nyo sabihin, ay nagsalita dun si Chairman Aisma. Sorry, but it doesn't work that way. Here in Subic, we implement everything to the letter. Kasi nagmamalasakit kami. And my clarion call for you as you spend your several days here in Subic is magmalasakit po tayo. 
because Subic is the gem of our country. This is not just for us, it's also for you, for all us Filipinos. Subic is the Philippines. And Philippines is Subic. We are all in this together. This is not my job alone. It is everybody's job. So nakikiusap po ako sa inyo. When you go out there and you spend your money, please pick up the trash. Please follow the rules. If you can't do it for yourself, please do it to respect the hard work of my people. Alo marami kaming pagkukulang, but we are all not perfect, but we try. So I guess I will not make this any longer. I would like to welcome you to Subic, and we hope to be able to build Subic and our country together hand in hand, because I've always believed that everything is better and stronger together. Maraming maraming pong salamat.